The Time of Legends series is one I've been dimly aware of for some time, in that it is the Warhammer Fantasy equivalent of the Horus Heresy series. Looking for both a new series to get into and a way back into reading Black Library fiction, I decided to give this a punt, and Hilton Hammett was, as far as I could tell, the first book in the series. Sigmar fights men and orcs as he forges an empire. That's, um... Yeah, that's about it, really. Third-person past tense throughout. Although I do have a tendency to rag on McNeil for his bouts of uninteresting idiocy, the man can certainly write a good action set piece. Everything flows well enough, and the character interactions are usually fun. My biggest criticism is the overuse of flashbacks at the start of chapters, and at points during a chapter, and, well all over the place, really. I mean, a chapter or a paragraph will begin at a certain point, uh, for example, in the middle of a daring escape, and then it will, the book will spend a great deal of time covering what led up to that point. Now, as a device, it can work, and work well, to keep a cinematic flow to the story going, but after a while it gets really, really dull. This was something I picked up in the hopes of finding a new series to sink my teeth into. Having little knowledge of the Warhammer fantasy world, what appealed to me was in getting to read something where I didn't know the basic outcome of everything. The problem is that it's crap. Not unreadable, incoherent garbage that makes you wonder at the competency of the proofreaders and the editors. Rather, this is the sort of crap that could have been utterly bloody epic, but fails miserably. It fails because Sigmar is just so poorly written it's untrue, and given practically the entire novel is focused on Sigmar... The issue stems from the fact that Sigmar has neither doubt nor personality. He has no doubt that he will one day forge a great empire of mankind that it is his destiny. But he also has no personality, in that everything he does is focused solely on that goal, and anything outside of that goal just bounces off him. When tragedy strikes, there's no sense that he is becoming a broken man, that the grief of losing people who are so close to him is taking its toll, or changing him in some manner. There's no self-reflection about whether or not his course is the correct one, no moment where he stops and thinks, maybe this is too much for one man to achieve in one lifetime. The sad part is that there are some genuinely fun and interesting supporting characters, and indeed the occasional good character moment from Sigma himself. It's just that the only thing that has stuck with me is that Sigma isn't really a character, but rather, I don't know, a vessel for destiny, or, or maybe just a... Um, I don't know, just plot, I guess. Just plot. I mean, he walks through the novel utterly assured as to his place in history, and the mark that he will leave, and it's just boring. It's like everything I hate about the Ultramarines focused into one character. I mean, there's... There's no balance, I, I guess, between what is obviously the legend of Sigmar and the reality. Or rather, the legend, it seems, is the reality, and that really holds little personal interest for me, and it does rather feel limiting for a piece of fiction. As a counterexample, one of my favourite Star Trek novels, uh, just go with me on this, one of my favourite Star Trek novels is called Kalis. The premise is that a tome from the days of Kalis the Unforgettable is found throwing doubt on the very foundations of Klingon culture. Now, what makes the novel so great is that half the story is told from the time of Kalis. We see the actual history and how that history became the myths and legends that form the basis of modern Klingon culture. And that would have been far more interesting as an approach for a novel like this. Taking what we know, well, I don't, but you get the idea. Taking what we know, and instead of basically writing the legend, instead write the reality, and show how the legend grew from that reality. But that's not what happened here. What happened here was a vast amount of fanboyish nonsense that filled the gaps between large set-piece battles which, whilst nicely brutal and bloody, held little actual drama. I think the ultimate issue here is that what happens in Heldenhammer does not feel natural. None of it feels like a natural progression of events, but rather they felt like things which happened 
because they happened. Sigma forges an empire because Sigma forged an empire. So long story short, my interest in the Time of Legends series has gone from cautious excitement to utter indifference in the space of one novel. 